Hi and welcome back to a new video. In about two weeks, it's again the time for Computex, where I will be for you to try to shoot about 10 to 15 videos in this one week, which I'm also trying to edit and upload in the same week, which also means that I will have to, I will need a device for the editing. Last year I did this with my notebook and honestly I wasn't quite happy about it. First of all, it's only a 14 inch notebook, which is great for traveling, but not that great for video editing. And secondly, it just took always way too long for the rendering typically between 45 and 60 minutes for a video. And then in the same time, I can't edit a new one. So I wanted to change something. Then first I thought, okay, I will just buy a stronger notebook, but then, you know, a strong and fast notebook is gonna be quite expensive. And I'm not sure how it feels for you, but for me, notebooks for whatever reason, they always feel a little bit laggy. And I'm not sure why this is the case or if it's just me, but then I thought, okay, I will just get a mini PC, a stronger mini PC, this one, which we will also try to modify a little bit in this video. And this will maybe be the better solution for me. Thermal Greasy Duranaut is our new high-end thermal paste and the successor of Cryonaut. It's even better performing, it is much easier to apply, it is cheaper and it's much more durable. That's where the name comes from. Especially if you're now maybe considering to buy a new PC, then I would highly recommend that you're looking into this thermal paste. So let's continue with this video. I was looking through almost all the mini PCs I could find because I wanted to have something that is not too big, not too heavy, because I want to take this with me in my carry-on luggage inside the plane so I can't use something that is just too big and too heavy, but I wanted to still have desktop hardware inside. Most of the mini PCs, the really tiny ones, they just have notebook hardware and then, yeah, it wouldn't, it wouldn't really help me, right? Then I found this is the Lenovo ThinkCenter Neo Ultra, but it's quite expensive for my opinion if you buy it in the Lenovo store. So for this version that I have right here, which is using an i7-14700 and an RTX 4060 desktop, it would be about 2000 euros. But I found this as a refurbished version for 1500, which I think is quite a fair price. It was also available for 1400 euros with the 14500 CPU and new, but then I thought the 14700, 100 euro more, that might do the trick, but it wouldn't have enough SSD capacity, it's only one terabyte SSD inside, which will not be enough for the footage that I will record during the week. So I want to add a second SSD to it and also upgrade the memory because according to the listing, it's only equipped with 16 gigabyte of memory, which is not really enough for video editing. That's why I want to place 64 gigabyte of memory inside. I have to say this one actually feels quite nice. I think it's also an aluminum shell. So quality wise, not bad. We have some spacing in here and I'm not quite sure yet if this is, if it's gonna output the heat or if it's an intake for air. Not sure about that yet. So we have dual USB-A in the front, Type-C audio jack. And on the back, what surprised me is the amount of yeah, possible display connections. This should be the RTX 4060 with a triple display port, HDMI. This should be just the motherboard with also what is necessary for me Ethernet, that is also a learning I had from last year. If you connect to most of the hotels over Ethernet, if they have a port, it's often much faster than the Wi-Fi that the, some of the hotels have for uploading for me. That is also very important. And it's a 320 watt built-in PSU. And that goes hand in hand, usually also with the cooling capacity and 320 watts, that's probably more than what most of the notebooks are capable of. I first thought I would gamble a little bit and just try to use the TV that should be there in my hotel room. But then I also thought, okay, you never know what kind of TV it is, right? Or if it's just like a very old one that can only run 1080p resolution. So yeah, I thought I will just get an external monitor. So I bought this one of Amazon. This is 2K, 144 Hertz, just small external monitor as a backup. So if they have a really old and shitty TV, then I still have this as a backup. It's still quite light and yeah, shouldn't take up a lot of space. That's basically going to be the setup. I also ordered a small Logitech uh, mechanical keyboard. Still charging this, obviously I will use it wireless, but still, because I'm using it the first time, just charging mouse and keyboard for now. But also I like it with the small and matte surface display. Not bad. I also already set up Windows with all the applications that I need. I think we will just run Cinebench first. That's just for first check for me for the performance because that's kind of what you will do or what I will do when rendering out the video. So that's kind of comparable. 
I saw peak 155 watts, you can see almost 150 now under load, which is not bad at all, but also quite high temperatures. Yet, almost 28,000 points in R23. And that's also kind of what I was aiming for, because with this, the entire setup cost me about 1800 euros for the PC and the display and the keyboard and mouse and all that. But if I would invest 1800 euros in the notebook, I would probably not get this kind of multi-threading performance, which will be relevant for me at the end when I'm rendering out the video in Adobe Premiere. And also most of the notebooks, you know, they're sharing the cooling solution with the CPU and the GPU. And then if both are loaded, then I don't know, like from experience, it would just take a little bit longer and then, you know, notebooks would probably still feel laggy for whatever reason. Now I at least know that the GPU can pull about 150, 160 watts peak, sustained probably a little bit less, but now I just want to see how much power the GPU can draw in the system. In times by Extreme GT1, it's about 32 FPS, which is what is expected with an RTX 4060 and the card was pulling about 120 watts under load with peaking at 65 degrees Celsius and 79 on the hotspot. Then I was obviously interested in how is this thing built and what is the, the size or the standard of the RTX 4060 that is inside, because if they're listing a desktop GPU, I would expect a real desktop GPU, which also raises a question if I can upgrade this in the future or not. I know that the CPU is socketed, but that wouldn't really help us. I mean, the socket is basically that, but for the GPU, we will see. I just removed the first of this foot and realized that you might be able to twist this and then take it out. Interesting. Mm -hmm. It would indeed be fairly easy to upgrade SSD and memory. So just add the second SSD on here and then replace the memory to whatever you want. This is a pretty high quality case. It's indeed just fully made of, out of aluminum. It's also quite sharp on the edges as I had to find out opening this. And also the thing on top is intake for air. It's not outtake as you might think in the first moment. Also cool that most of the surface inside is equipped with, I think noise dampering material. At least it's some sort of foam inside. Indeed looks like a pretty normal RTX 4060. Very compact, but apart from that, I think even the power connector is standard. I'm not quite sure about this one yet, but then we just have a riser board on the bottom. Pretty cool. I will try to remove the frame so we can somehow get the card out. We're making good progress, but then I thought, okay, I will have to move the GPU to the right. So I definitely have to take out the PSU. That's a cute PSU, also only two wires. Now I should be able to get the card out. Well, this looks like a normal 8-pin. I find it somewhat hilarious that they have to put RTX 4060 on this. Well, I don't think they want to, but they probably have to by NVIDIA, but nobody will ever read this. But apart from that, it's a, that's a pretty cool and a tiny and cute card. And we can see, obviously, as all the other RTX 4060s, it's an X8 PCIe card. Two fans like this is also something I haven't seen before, and I'm not quite sure why they chose this design. I think the CPU should sit underneath here, at least judging by the backside of the motherboard. Okay, I thought this would be somehow screwed in. That now explains why they had the dual fans. The left fan blowing through here, right fan blowing through here, left fan I guess mainly for M.2 and the chipset, but also with the heat pipes underneath it will assist with the CPU cooling. You will see that the left PCIe slot is not a standard one because there was this riser PCB inside and the riser PCB on the other side here where you can see the cutout had another M.2 connection. So they used 16 lanes in total but then split it up 
for eight for the GPU and four for the SSD. But you can see that they definitely put some thought in this PC. That's a lot of custom PCB and work that they performed for this system. Plenty of thermal paste, everything had a good imprint, thermal pads as well. I will for sure replace the thermal paste. I also thought of putting a contact frame in here, but then I realized that this won't be possible because they used the ILM at the same time for fixing the CPU and the heatsink. You can see it screws directly into the ILM. That is also an interesting design, but makes it hard to change it, like we can't change the ILM. While researching for this video, I also figured out that there is a RTX 4070 version of this, but only available in China. So I was not able to get this, but maybe I can in the future find a GPU with the same size, because this looks like a pretty standard sized RTX 4060, at least in terms of the, of the length. Now I want to put everything back together, put new paste on it. By the way, that's also the riser PCB for the PCIe connection to the card and also the M.2 on the back side, yeah. Just have to make sure that I can find the right spots for all the screws again. I'm almost done with the assembly. I just now want to add the 64 gigabyte of memory and also the SSD. It's not a special SSD, it's just two terabyte gen three. Speed is not that important, just capacity. That's exactly what you want to see after taking this apart. No signal, great. It's possible that it doesn't like the memory, which I didn't expect, it's only 5600. I mean, it's 64 gigabytes still, but hmm. I'll just put back the original memory. Well, it works with the original memory and the iGPU, but it didn't work with the 4060. But the weird thing is that in Device Manager, the 4060 is present and I can also run the render test of it. So maybe I just have to, I don't know, reboot. Now reboot it over the 4060, which works. I also put the SSD back inside, it also works. Uh, honestly, I thought I broke things again. I will try again with the new memory modules, see if it just, I don't know, takes too long on the first boot. I will just let it sit for a couple of minutes. Patience paid off. It just took a couple of minutes to boot for the first time. And now in BIOS, you can also see 65 gigabyte were detected. Everything else also looks correct. Another quick check in Cinebench, but everything looks good. Okay, but with this, I should be ready for Computex. I will now take all of this and put it inside a smaller suitcase together with the camera. And that should be my carry-on luggage for Computex. That should be interesting. And I think it will make things for me a lot smoother and easier when it comes to shooting, editing, and also uploading the videos for you as fast as possible. Also, I'm not sure if timing-wise this was probably a bad thing to do because I'm also expecting to see new and better mini PCs being launched at Computex, maybe also with the new AMD Strix Halo CPUs. I think we should be able to see something quite interesting there. Yeah, we will see. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time. Bye-bye.